Hello and welcome to It's About Youth. I'm Fana Shea and this is the show that talks about issues that matter to youth. Now, today's topic is a very hot topic. We'll be talking about salary and wages. More importantly, wage transparency. Joining us today is Amardeep Singh, employment lawyer, as well as founder of Malaysian Pay Gap, Pristine. Right. Thank you for joining us. Um, right. Thank you for having us. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay, so wage transparency is a very hot topic among youths, especially who are starting work, who may not have the grasp of how we communicate salary effectively within, within their peers, within their colleagues, or even within, with their employers. So we want to tackle this head on. Let's start first uh, with the first question um, to Pristine. You know, founder of Malaysian Pay Gap, uh, uh, how do you say it? Like a, a non-profit that is... We are a professional pro community that shares career notes. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you have an Instagram page where people can basically talk about their salary, share how, how can we tackle wage transparency more effectively. So to you, what is the purpose of wage transparency and why is it important and who did it benefit? I definitely think that wage transparency is important when we don't emphasize on that money value is attached to our own value. Because when you are doing this, um, you will add in a lot of like jealousy, a lot of emotional imbalances into it. But if you can talk about wage very openly, you just treat it as the value that you're giving out to the workplace. This will just benefit the economy without all the sentiments. And without all the sentiments, eventually like racial disparity, gender disparity will also be improved. Because when you're afraid to talk about things amongst your coworkers, you might not know that some, one person could be feel very, he could assume that he's being underpaid mm. and he doesn't know how to sit with that feeling. And he would do a lot of assumption and he'll feel yeah. very resentful about the workplace yeah. and then he would just quit. Yeah. And then you won't even figure out the reason of quitting. Yeah. Or there's somebody who is maybe of a special different race and then she also made an assumption that she's not getting paid well. And then the communication with coworkers are also a bit off because of that assumption. And then you just can't achieve equality in that sense. Right, sort of an overall sort of negative. Yeah, it has that lingering it. feeling of yeah. uncertainties. What about you, um, um, What's your thought on this? So I think there is a benefit to both employees and also employers. I will start off first with um, employees. So for employees, of course, you will bridge, you will bridge the gap, right? The pay gap that we have, the gender pay disparity that we have as well, um, and what that will then assist us to achieve is equality, right? Mm -hmm. um, and at the same time, for the employers as well, it'll be a catalyst for productivity to increase productivity within your company as well, and. Uh, for the employees back again, the employees will understand their true value besides just the value that's been attached to them by the organization. And I will give you an um, um, illustration. Uh, for example, if you're an employee working for company A and uh, you're looking to explore other opportunities, you're earning a salary of 3000 and you fi suddenly find out that there is an opportunity in company B. Company B is a bigger company and you apply and you subsequently will have to disclose your pay slip. Your pay right. slip shows that you've been earning a salary of 3,000. But company B has got a salary range for, for example, this position, uh, 4,005 to 6,000. Now, having disclosed your salary that it shows that you're earning a salary of 3,000, have you then placed yourself at a slight disadvantage? Mm. Because to that employee, if he were to be offered a position of, uh, sorry, if he's offered that role for 3,009, he would take it. Yeah. You know, it's a 30% increase, but he doesn't know he was actually below the, the salary range of the company, right? Yeah, that's one. Number two, I think for the employers as well, is that uh, ESG is becoming a very big thing, mm -hmm. right? Environment, social, corporate governance is becoming a very big thing, uh, not just worldwide, but in Malaysia itself. We have seen um, the implications and how it's trickled down to... Um, um, import and export bans on uh, arising from issues of forced labor right and one very critical element of esg is uh, diversity equity and inclusion and a part of it also talks about wage transparency being transparent in your advertisements so besides just uh, benefit to the employee it's also beneficial to the employer and it may at some point be imposed on 
um, the employer itself because of an ESG audit or being scrutinized from the element of, of ESG. And foreign investors may not want to do business with you because you're unable to, to check their ESG audit. Right. So it seems like there's a lot of benefit and leverage when it comes to having a wage transparency model either within employees or within employer. But, okay, talking about a more cultural aspect of it, I guess, in a sense that, you know, if we're between friends, for example, we rarely talk openly about salary. It's such a, I wouldn't say taboo, I wouldn't go as far as taboo, but it's very hush-hush. I feel like people try to protect, you know, how much they earned in fear of, not really sure what, what is in fear of, but there's something holding people back about talking about their salary. So, first thing, you know, dealing with a lot of, you know, probably fresh graduates, young people who are, you know, getting into the work, work sector. Why is it not widely adopted, you think, this concept of wage transparency? Is it a culture thing? And how, how do you think it differs from other countries? I think it's not adopted right now because the youngest generation, Gen Z, they are not in workforce yet. Because mm -hmm. from my experience of running the account, I do know that the Gen Z, they are very open to talk about wages. Ah, okay. So I do believe that wage transparency eventually will be adopted in Malaysia. It's just a matter of time. Mm -hmm. But going back to past generation, it's everything that we were being taught by our family. Mm -hmm. Even between, in a big family, between micro families, they don't even chat about how much each other are earning. Yeah. It's as if that we are trying to keep the resources to ourselves so that people will not come and take our resources. Yeah. Do you happen to have this kind of feeling as well when it comes to uh, you know, this? Yes, yes. And if I may just add on a bit. Um, and in fact, if you look at um, employers and if you look at our employment contracts and if you look at our policies itself, it's actually a disciplinary offence to disclose your salary. Mm. Right? So having a conversation about your salary could, in effect, cost you your job. Right? You could be subject to disciplinary action. Uh, and, and I think that adds on to the taboo that we've been hearing for many years. But you're right, I think the Gen Z are a bit different. The younger mm -hmm. generations, they're a bit, they might be a bit more open um, to share more information compared to the older generation. Yeah, so sort of us millennials and, and above, that's a bit more... Yeah, because I do think that um, it also had to do with how the sharing culture is right now. Because with social media being so rampant, people are very used to oversharing. Mm. Maybe that's why the Gen Z feel like it's okay to just share how much we're earning to benefit one yeah, another. Sort of benchmarking. Right? Yeah. yeah. Right, okay. Um, I want to talk to you, Amardeep, about some of the challenges that may arise. Oh, I do have one point to add on, may I? Sure, yes. Um, I also think that in order for wage transparency to actually happen, say, in a company, the company actually needs to be very structured. Mm. If say societies as a whole, you don't have a lot of businesses with really structured plan and also um, remuneration package, it's very hard to have this kind of talk. Mm. Right, I mean definitely it has to come in a way that is wholesome and not just a one-off thing, you know, a one-off measure, right, that they're trying to explore. Right, um, Amardi, we talk about now some of the challenges that may arise when implementing this concept. Um. I think there might be a lot of legal and also social risk. Um, the first one I can think of is privacy concerns, mm. right? It's a change of mindset. Um, having not been comfortable sharing your wage or information pertaining to your wage, um, discussing it, number one, could lead to a more hostile work, work environment. It could be, right? Um, uh, one example I could think of, for example, just December just passed, a lot of a lot of employees enjoyed their bonus. Mm. I'm sure some employees, um, for example, an employee who would have received a three months bonus, having received a three months bonus, uh, the employee would have been generally very satisfied. But if uh, this openness were to take place uh, with no caveat, with no regulations on how it's supposed to be done, an employee may discover that his colleague got um, six months and suddenly the workplace might be very toxic yeah. because the employee that didn't receive the same remuneration may not understand why. He only understands that he didn't receive the same remuneration. The person is employed in the same position as him, mm. but received more money than him. Yeah. So I think that's one. Um, number two is how transparency is going to be carried out. For example, if it's going to involve a third-party platform, 
um, in fact, even ju just like a Malaysia a pay gap, um, that information or that data that's being given, you know, is that data secured? And how will that, that data be kept and stored? You know? um, so, yeah, I think those are some of the immediate concerns that you may see. Right. I think it draws back to what Prasim was saying just now. You know, if it's not done effectively, then it creates a culture of assumption and you know those toxic right. feelings yes. around employees. Because when employers. you look at government um, transparency, pretty transparent pay ranges, they wouldn't have that problem because mm. the everything is very well structured. People won't question why is this ranking received this amount of salary, right? Okay, we want to talk more about how this concept should be adopted, you know, within employer circle and employee circle after this break. Hi and welcome back to It's About Youth. Today I'm joined by Amardeep Singh, um, employment lawyer, as well as Pristine from Malaysian Pay Gap. Right, we are talking about wage transparency today. We've talked in the first segment how important it is, who they benefit, and what sort of challenges um, the concept might have when implemented in, in, in a work setting. Now we want to talk about how to effectively adopt it. Right, uh, let's start with you, Amardeep, from the employer side. How do you think employers should approach you know, setting up a wage transparency model? Are there any do's and don'ts, especially you know, when it comes to hiring process, for example? Yeah, so um, I, I think very important is previously what I was, was we were discussing was that you can't, you can't disclose your salary, right? You can't unilaterally dis decide as an employee that I would like to disclose my salary to an employee. So for a start, it must be a policy. The employer must implement a policy on what can be disclosed. For example, salary ranges. Um, very common as well, you would see that in different bands, um, for example, you might hold a position of finance executive, but there might be three different grades within that position. Mm -hmm. And each position would have, each grade would have a salary range. Um, that has to be determined as well. Now, once that is determined, I think from time to time, there must be a review. There must be a review by the employer itself to understand whether there is a salary gap. If there is a salary gap, who is it affecting? You know, is it affecting a particular race? Is it affecting a gender? Is it a gender pay disparity? And if it is, how can that be bridged? You know, how can that be closed? Um, so that's very important. Um, that, in terms of don'ts, and I think the very common thing that everyone um, um, would ask always is, can I not provide my pay slip, pay slip yeah. right, when someone applies for a job? Um, unfortunately, there is no law which says that the employee cannot provide so you their can? pay slip, right? <laughs> so, uh, but um, I, I think that confidentiality or that disclosure has to be reciprocal. So if the employee is disclosing his salary, quite rightly, then he should request and ask, can, do you mind if um, you disclose the salary range that I'm applying for? Um, and that would give you a, an idea, you know, if you're applying for a job, how much, what's that range? Um, and at the same time, protect yourself to ensure that, that there is uh, no pay gap. Right. So from the employee side, Prasteen, how do we actually approach wage transparency, you know, within employees of the same company as well as approaching, you know, employers when it comes to this? This is definitely very tough. Um, I have witnessed two scenarios. One is when a co-worker find out that another one is being underpaid. And in the name of justice, they share with each other, just trying to help the other one out. And then another one would be when you're expressing or sharing how much you're earning, there should be a purpose. And then the purpose shouldn't be about bragging. And I've often seen that people are very sensitive, say if a person is earning more than you, even from managing Malaysian pay gap, say a person is earning 8,000 for a position and people will just comment down below and say that, whoa, he's bragging, he's bragging, he's bragging. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's always a purpose. That's why in our screening, we make sure that whatever sharing, it has to share career advice, some unique insight. It's not just putting the salary hey, out there. this is how much I make. 
Yeah. yeah. There has to be some valuable exchange. Yeah. Right. How about approaching wage transparency when it comes to approaching employers? When it comes to approaching employers would be what Amadeep suggested. It really depends on what is the purpose that you are trying to initiate a talk about. Is it negotiation? It's more likely negotiation or else they wouldn't want to initiate any conversation with the employers. Right. So if you find out, for example, in your case, in the case that you gave just now, if someone is being underpaid, can they take it up to to their employer, for example? Or do you, have, you, have, you seen when, cases, have you seen cases like this where people are just not satisfied with you know, the salary and wages and they took it up to the employer, for example? In a scenario that in the contract is actually against the policy for them to chat about. But yeah, then they found right. out. So, um, of course, you know, employees have been dismissed. Action has been taken against them for breaching or, or disclosing their confidential data. Um, on the other side, I also, employees may, if they think that they are being discriminated against, uh, in Malaysia, there's an avenue for unjust dismissal. Um, so, if you're an employee and you feel that um, you've been unfairly treated, you can walk out of your employment claiming constructive dismissal. Constructive mm -hmm. dismissal pretty much just means that you have been pushed to a corner, you have no choice, there has been a fundamental breach of your employment contract um, and therefore you have to leave. So the question then is, by discriminating against you, by giving one employee, let's say an employee uh, from gender A, right, um, a higher salary than someone from gender B, how is that a breach of your employment contract? It's implied in every employment contract, um, the obligation of mutual trust and confidence. I would not do anything to harm you. I would, I'll give you a safe working environment. Mm -hmm. I will carry out my work dutifully, right? It's reciprocal. Yeah. Um, and therefore, if there is a breach of that implied terms, you can claim constructive dismissal. It will be an uphill task, of course, for you to claim that there has been discrimination. Very likely, the employer would be able to pull out, well, various different justifications to, to justify his actions. Um, and also, uh, lately, um, it's, it, you will be seeing this a lot in Malaysian employment legislation, is that there has been a shift and uh, we have been taking steps to improve our employment legislation in Malaysia. Mm. And this is a step that we are taking actually, um, the genesis of it is the TPPA in 2016. When we tried to sign the TPPA in 2016, um, uh, the, the labour standards of the member countries were audited and Malaysia along with two other countries their labour standards were found to be below what was required mm -hmm. and various shortcomings were highlighted and one of the shortcomings that was highlighted was in our Employment Act and uh, we have also because of that introduced and amended our Employment Act and introduced a provision specifically for discrimination. So if you're an employee and you feel that you have been discriminated against, you can actually go to the Director General of Labour um, and lodge a complaint and the Director General of Labour would then um, investigate, hear the matter, and then make a decision. Yeah. Right. Is that? Oh, yeah. okay. And also, coworker is not only the only source of salary information that one can get. They can also look through Glassdoor mm. or any sal salary benchmarking website. If you can pull out the market salary that you believe should apply to yourself, you can also take this data to talk to your employers. Right. Right. Definitely. I think those. You know, like sites like Glassdoor, Job Street, Seek, for example, I think especially young people are always on there looking for, you know, the kind of jobs that would fit their criteria and their salary range. Um, from, already, if you mind elaborating a little bit from the legal aspect, is there any specific act that can allow for better adoption of wage transparency? I, I know the listeners probably are hoping that the answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but there is no specific legislation. Mm -hmm. There was the um, along with the various amendments that we are looking to bring into our employment legislation to improve our employment standards in line with international standards. Uh, the Salary uh, Transparency Act was proposed, uh, but no steps have been taken just yet. Um, but there are other acts. One of them was the Employment Act and the introduction of uh, the provision that the Director General can now investigate issues of discrimination. That's one. There's also the Industrial Relations Act. The Industrial Relations Act um, allows non-executive employees to be unionized, mm. right? 
And because they are unionized, they can enter into a collective agreement. And very common in this collective agreement, for the various positions, there will be a, a band, there will be a salary range. Uh, so, for example, a boiler man, he would be earning a salary of X dollars and the maximum of X dollars. Right? Yeah. But again, that doesn't apply to managerial position, executive position, anyone in confidential or security positions. It's only non-executives. What right. will it take for a Salary Transparency Act to come true? Mm -hmm. um, I think from, from what, what we have read that's been reported, it doesn't look like that's the step that they're looking at. I think they're looking more of a progressive wage policy, yeah. which um, I think the pilot program, it's supposed to go, on, go up in June with a thousand companies. Yes. Um, that's, that's the first baby step, I think. Yes, that's it, the right? first baby step. Yes. That's the first baby step. We have, okay. seen, we have seen other countries take steps though. Mm. You know, we've seen California, for example, they have made it mandatory uh, for every advertisement to, to set the salary ranges, right. so people understand. We have seen reporting obligations in other countries. For example, in Iceland, um, there is a requirement to obtain an equal uh, pay certification. In Australia or the European Union, uh, likewise, you must report gender pay disparity. Yeah. In the UK, in fact, they've even it's a ban to include a provision in the employment contract that you're not allowed mm. to discuss your 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 salary. Yeah. Right. So. The difference is in California and also in New York State, when you post up a job advertisement, it's compulsory for you to put salary range. Mm -hmm. And after the candidate went on an interview and found out that the range is not accurate, they actually have the right to report. To report but yeah. in Malaysia, we do have the range being shared, but it's not respected. Some, yeah, yeah. Okay. right. Right, okay, so we have the goal, we have the aim, probably a Salary Transparency Act at some point going towards that you know how do we promote um you know being more transparent about our wages when it comes to you know us ourselves as a society as well as you know within the employers because i'll give you guys a scenario for example if i'm talking to someone about salary for example if i found out they earn more than me if we're in the same position for example if i find out they earn more than me i feel bad if i find out they earn less than me i feel bad so in both circumstances I would feel bad because you know I might feel that I'm underperforming or I might feel that you know I'm being discriminated against so it's 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 uh, uh, in either way approach it, you there's some negative connotations to it but you know we want we want this model this wage transparency thing to be a thing that we can sort of freely adopt willingly adopt for benchmarking, for narrowing income gap, for example, gender gap and all that. So how do we promote that? Let's start with you, Christine. We need to normalize it from soft culture standpoint. That's why we believe that we, we are taking great transparency interview on, out on the street right now. Mm. Yeah, we'll interview people and get them really comfortable to just talk about it. The more you talk about it, it's just, just going to be part of culture. And when you pointed out how either way you will feel bad, that's because emotions are in the play yeah just be very rational anyway because in that two scenario you have a solution mm -hmm. one you can look into yourself and improve yourself and then the other one you can actually bring it to your upper management to see what you can do about it right yeah well, what about you Amari? what do you think um, I think the first thing is there's the there's the, it's still a cultural taboo mm. right yeah. it's a cultural taboo um, that in Malaysia or actually in Asian countries we do not discuss our salary um, that mindset has to change. Probably that will only change through open dialogue, mm -hmm. right? And we have seen uh, open dialogue gain traction in the last six months at least, right? Um, it's an act has been proposed, right? For the first time, and I've not heard of this um, in the longest time in Malaysia. It didn't seem like anyone was concerned about the issue. Mm -hmm. So that's the first step. Uh, number two, I think on the employer side, they need to understand that they have to deal with this sooner or later. Yeah. Um, ESG initiatives are going to be the thing of the future. Uh, we have seen movement um, worldwide, not only worldwide, also in Malaysia. And at some point, you will need to take steps to promote this in your company. You will need to take steps to ensure that if there is a gender pay disparity within your organization, you're going to have to take steps to bridge it. Uh, that might be through guidelines, that might be through audits. Yeah. Right. Um, so I guess last question for the both of you, um, you know, in the long run, do you think um, this wage transparency model 
um, would be successfully adopted here in Malaysia and do you think it can promote a more equal, inclusive workplace and as well as, you know, narrowing the income gap in the future, um, per se? I strongly believe so because I do think that we are in a transition. When you can see from the far north, they are stepping into the reality of wage transparency. And it's a matter of time for us to pick up culturally. And But then I believe that new unbiases will happen. When there is less gender pay gap, less racial pay gap, then the, the only differences would be how good you are at your job. Mm. Yeah, so we're not sure how this will be tackled because it's not about wage transparency anymore. It's about bridging like productivity, productivity and, and also bridging the collective intelligence. Right. right. What do you think, um, Yes, I, I think it's good. I think wage transparency is a move or we should be moving towards that. Um, we need to understand the issues first, like what Pristine was saying. The first issue that we have is there is a pay gap, right? We mm. need to understand why is there a pay gap. Um, if there is a gender pay disparity, we need to understand why is there a gender pay disparity. Um, only then can we successfully introduce policies, guidelines or even law to address the problem or to deal with wage transparency. So I think it needs to be, it needs to be done, but it must be well regulated. It's also right. a whole of society approach, don't you agree? Correct, that's right. Yeah. It, must, it must be properly regulated. It mustn't be a case of you know, water cooler discussions. Mm. We are going to decriminalise decriminalize, uh, dis disclosing your salary. So now employees are free to go to the water cooler and discuss and disclose their salaries. I think that could create a different or more toxic work environment. Yeah, right. You know, having proper regulations for it. And like you said, you know, not just a one-off thing, um, a really thought out measure that can cascade throughout employers right, yeah. and employees. Right. I think that's about time that we have to discuss about wage transparency for now. Um, I understand we're seeing there'll be a Malaysian Pay Gap Summit coming up. Yes, it's called a Work Slayer Summit. It's happening this January 20 and 21st. So it is about, we are trying to curate um, local role models for the youth. Right, I mean, that's definitely something that, you know, um, everyone who can go to, to your to the Malaysian Pay Gap Instagram yes. and check it out and probably if they have a summit next time around, you guys can probably join that. Too. We do plan to plan it to be an annual event. Right. We're trying to shape the discord, like you said. Yeah. yeah. We'll take care of the culture. You will take care of the legal part. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's great. And I'll be here promoting you guys. Yes. <laughs> right. That's all the time we have. Thank you so much, Amar Deep Singh, as well as Pristine, for joining us today to talk about this very, very hot topic. I'm Fanashi. Thank you for watching.